Hey guys, this is Frankie of the cinematic post rock post metal band Mirror Drown, and you're listening to the Bloodshed with Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Frankie, Simon, thank you guys very much for taking time out for this interview. It's a pleasure to have you here on the Metal Bloodshed with the Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Thank you, Jacob. It's an honor to be here with you. Cheers, Jacob. Yeah, okay, you're very welcome, guys. Originally created as a solo project in 2016, May Red Her Drone is currently an emerging reality of Melbournean cinematic post-rock music scene, featuring international musicians from Australia, New Zealand and Italy. How did this band start, this solo project, and where did you... I'm talking about now, for those who was involved in the creation of this band, How did you, the first members, completed the lineup? Um, And what's the story behind Mirror Drone? Yeah, the name as a band. As we know, Mirror Drone started as a solo project by Seamus, our guitarist and founder. Yeah, Seamus is currently busy, like, doing way more music stuff. So I'm currently responding for him. He wrote five songs by himself. He wasn't too confident about these songs, but they eventually got released by his good friend, Mikey Harland would have started to play bass with him. So Mira John starts a sort of a partnership and friendship between Mikey, our old bass player, and Seamus. And this is back in 2016. And with the help of two other fellow players, they started playing together, performing the songs that Seamus originally wrote for the band. When I joined, the band was still playing the song. So the original first EP of Mira John, as in the first five tracks, including the Laura Palmer's theme, which went pretty viral on the internet, did something like around... 20,000 views or so. And so I joined Miriam John at the beginning of 2017. The band was in a bit of process. The band was starting to passing from the the first gen of the band as in the first version, the band was still the band that was still playing the EP into the band that will write that will eventually get to write Akamogana, the full length album. And so uh, okay, um, Frankie, yeah. let's not uh, go too fast, <laughs> too, too early. Um, but uh, what's the story behind uh, the band name? Uh, where did you guys uh, yeah, create that name from? Myriad Drown. Well, it's just basically the concept of Myriad Drown, or is in like, how do you call it, Simon? You know that kind of place where all the bees like get to catch uh, up? Yeah, like the, um, the beehive. Yeah, like a beehive. Yeah. So the image, like the, the many imaginary behind the Mirror John first logo and Mirror John as a name is Beehive. It's like an inspiration, like hive of bees, where like a bunch of bees will meet up and then you know fly away from, to an actual myriad of drones, of flying drones. As in, it's a very, it's a sort of a futuristic kind of image, as in like a a myriad of drones flying in the sky. Yeah. Okay. The band founder and composer Seamus Maximus, with uh, the support of the fellow bass player Mikey Harland, produced and released the self-titled uh, Demo EP in 2016. Uh, tell us about the outstanding uh, feedback the album received on Bandcamp with the worldwide post-rock community. So yeah, the first EP of the band had actually a very good turnover as in like many people were sharing the songs one of the songs went pretty viral i think laura palmer's when the new twin peaks series came out the laura palmer's theme we got to know that the song was played at the one of the release parties of like the new twin peaks series like but the actual editors and that and there was like a shocking news when we got to know about it so that's pretty much it like the first cp of the band just started to give us a bit of visibility on the internet and started to set what Mirror John is today. As in, like, people started talking about us on the internet and that. We still didn't have a proper lineup to play shows with, which we have right now. So the EP was a pretty good success in terms of online exposure. And uh, the song went very well, and we got a bunch of digital sales on Bandcamp. But, yeah, the band was still growing. The band was still setting up to to a newborn. (laughs) And so it was a very first good step for the band. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm very sure. Last August, I had a great opportunity to interview Emily Highfield of uh, the Australian dark neo-folk post-rock atmospheric black metal band Soul Dust, featuring yeah. uh, major drone members as part of the current live lineup 
uh, for a soldier. So the one woman of Black and the Neo Folk Act, whose debut album, Luna Farce, drew incredible international praise, which was released on April 12, 2019, via the German Northern Silence production. Frankie, you now are playing with Emily. Did you know her from before? How did you get to work with her? It's actually me and Seamus who play with Emily. Yeah, so we first met Emily in December 2018. She came to one of our gigs and she met Seamus there as the first occasion. She started talking to Seamus about the fact that she had this album ready. She wanted to transform her ensemble because she was only doing acoustic gigs at the time into a proper band. So she got in touch with Seamus first and eventually Seamus told me about this. She's like, oh, you know, Emily asked me to play for her in her band because uh, she wants to pass to a full band. And I was like, oh, I don't actually know how she sounds like. And so Seamus showed me some of Emily's material, and I was quite impressed. At the time, she had a drummer available, and uh, after a few months, it ended up that she was actually looking for a drummer. So Seamus joined first in doing guitars and vocals with her, and eventually I got to join Sodas as well, because we all know each other. We're pretty much like family right now. There is to say, like Mir John and Solas, yeah. And so. Uh, Frankie, I must congratulate you because uh, she presented you as her uh, band drummer, uh, you know, drum teacher, black metal drummer. She really talks so, so good about you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We are very happy to play together. Emily is very inspiring. She's an amazing musician. And yeah, her story and her music and her message are something I really really value and i'm very happy to take on stage everywhere i go tell me how was that night march 2nd gone at bandy where you shared podium with soldos as flash the geese ritual and obsidian monolith yeah at the time this is march it was summer here in melbourne it was a very incredible gig like me and shamus got to see emily playing live for the first time and there were yeah there were josh another guy on jambeck glenn playing with her and uh we just found that the show was just great yeah sam was playing with us as well so yeah i can confirm the show emily put up that night was absolutely amazing especially the vocals and uh it was yeah it was just an incredible night that one we had a great time it was a great show all friends obscene and mall if they were celebrating their album release And yeah, we just that night in particular, like we started getting along very well. It wasn't the same gig we met up, but yeah, Mira Jones got to the show with her. Yeah, she opened up the gig. Like Emily actually opened up the gig. Then we played second. Yeah, it was just a great combination of things and people, and uh, just felt great. Yeah. The place was very well attended. Yeah, there was a decent attendance. Mira Jones turns into a four-piece band in late 2017 and start writing new materials that features hypnotic chanting melodies, dreaming vocals, and epic walls of sound inspired by the bands as Mono and Sigur Ross. Who is the fourth member? And could you please present us the current band members? All right, so current lineup for Mira Joan is Shane Maholland, also known as Seamus, on guitar and vocals. Jacob Petrosian on guitar and vocals as well. Simon Del Mastro here on bass. And me, myself, Frankie DeMuro on drums. This is the current lineup that Mira Joan has got. And this is the lineup that is bringing Arka Morgana on stage from now on. Yeah, the past lineup of the band consisted of two different members. The lineup that wrote the album Arka Morgana consisted of Dominic Lewis on guitar and Mikey Harland on bass guitar. Both incredible musicians. Yeah, we're very sorry that this very point of Mira Joan, you know, they're not with us anymore. Bands have to go through certain strong changes to keep the band vision going in time. Apart from our decision, apart from their decision, these two collaborators and great musicians are not playing with us anymore. But that's fine, you know, that's a process that every band every now and again has to go through. But yeah, the lineup that wrote Aka Morgana, the album, was very proficient and very active at the time. We were jamming a lot. We will spend pretty much two to three times a week out of studio in Melbourne, in Kensington, practicing songs and jamming and writing as much as possible. And then Seamus will go home and just do the magic, get straight into the pre-production and deliver us the songs how they sound today, really. Yeah, that's pretty much the process. So we had a pretty smooth transaction from what Mira John was back in the day, as in late 17, 
Like there is the lineup that wrote the album, which started like in late 2017, correct? The album was pretty much written down at the start of 2018. Right after that, I got to join the studio and it took us pretty much six to seven months to finish Aka Morgana's release in this day. Don't say too much. <laughs> yes. Melbourne, a cinematic post-rock enigmas. Major Drone released their new album, Aka Morgana, on last October 18th. 2019 independently standing out from any genre in the age of oversaturation is no easy task but major drone managed to do so via their immensely compelling soundscape and unique concept of melody song structures guys uh, don't you mind uh, to present us uh, the album tracking list please the album track list yes akamogana is made of eight songs 51 minutes of music. From track 1 to track 8, we've got Time Enough at Last, Vitres, Aka Morgana, Please Stand By, Atonement, All Roads Lead, Disguidance, and Unrequited. All these songs are based on a sort of a dreamscape kind of feeling. Each of these songs wants to be a nice journey in a different way. A sort of a, a journey in a rough sea, as, can, as people can see in like our artwork. Each song has a different meaning, each song has a different direction, like from where it starts to where it goes and ends. They're all very different, like each song has got a different stories. This album is more of a collection of ideas and feelings rather than something very compact. We want the listeners to be involved as much as possible in each of these songs because they are an individual journey. That's pretty much what I feel to say about this album. Yeah. Thank you, Frankie, for describing this album, a track, 51 minutes, as you said, of music. Yes, and thank you for sending me the MP3 file. Um, I had a chance to sit down and really enjoy this uh, great uh, new album. <laughs>
Arkham Organa came together over a nearly eight months long writing process and a major drone had premiered their debut full-length album and taken its first step within the Melbourne music scene. How had everything gone in the making of the album, including the writing and the recording process? Everything was going very well while writing the music. The music was our only distraction from a lot of problems and a lot of things that were happening in our personal lives. So the only way to make it through was writing as much music as we could and writing the best music that we could possibly think of. And so this is what Akamogana came from. It was a very tough period. We managed to do something about it. Our only way to fight all the difficulties that we had to go through was the music. This is what came out of it. We really hope that people listening to this album can feel something and especially that they can feel that the creativity in this music and the feels that this music wants to give them and the vibes this music wants to deliver are going to be a source of peace for them. Something that is going to give them chills as we say in australia <laughs> something yeah something, it was a, like the writing process was a, li- a very long process especially something i can say is that we didn't expect to have many vocals in the album not as many as there are right now miria jump when it started miria jump was exclusively an instrumental project we were purely instrumental or i would say mostly instrumental probably before we started recording there were like the 20 percent of the vocals that there are right now it's just that we recorded the whole thing first and then Seamus got like, oh, I'm actually bored. I can do more vocal stuff. And so he started experimenting a lot with the vocals. And uh, and the album came like that because of his excellent work with the vocals, the dreamy vocals that he did on it. It was probably the, the latest and longest part of the process was the vocals and the mixing and mastering because uh yeah we were very very fast and picky with the mastering and with the yeah both with the mixing and mastering. But you know eventually we are very happy with it because yeah. We put a lot of hours into it, but yeah, we, we're very glad. I love it. Instrumental, very nice. But the vocals that you guys added to it has given it a higher dimension. Can I say that? Yeah, it's so great. Thanks, man. I, I think Seamus will really appreciate your comment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, from uh, the marvelous uh, creation of Polish painter uh, Marius Lewandowski uh, comes uh, the artwork of the band's debut album, Arka Morgana. What an amazing album cover artwork that I must say this. Thank um, you. Tell us about this work done with uh, Marius, please. We chose this very painting from Marius' collection. Like Marius Lewandowski is a very renowned worldwide painter from Poland. He is absolutely amazing. We spotted some artworks from other bands. Like he's very famous for because bands lately have been uh, using his artworks as their own album covers. And uh, one of them is Mirror Reaper, Mirror Reaper by the band Bellwitch. We got very fascinated by the artwork, by Bellwitch artwork. And uh, we thought, wow, we should check this painter out. So we went through his gallery and we started looking at like as many paintings as we could to find something that could represent our music as much as possible. And we got to this painting that was called The Ark of Marriage. And uh, we found it beautiful. We found it very epic. And we found it would um, it would just represent, we would just make justice to the hugeness, if we can say this, that we wanted to transmit with our music. Like the the epic wall of sound we like we kind of talk about. That's all, that's all kind of thing. And something as big and as epic as that rough sea there with the arc coming out of the sea, like merging out is just something that will represent our music at our best, we thought. So we contacted Marius in order to buy distribution licensing of the painting, and eventually we got it. And we were very lucky because uh, sometimes it just leaves the painting there. You can actually buy the distribution. But for this one here, like the distribution was actually available. So we're very lucky and we're very thankful because the painting is amazing, and we're very happy to be ambassadors of Marius' art as well. Yeah, pretty much it. It's a very eye-catchy painting. People cannot um, see it and not want to take a look at it. I mean, the, I'm talking yeah. about the album now. Yeah, we got we get many comments about it, and we're very happy about it. It was something we really, really thought about. We wanted our artwork to be something absolutely amazing, something that people will really love to look at. And we are very stoked that we're getting a lot of positive comments about it and people are feeling that it goes well with the music and because it was priority for us to have an artwork that just like works well with the music 
when people sees it, they want to take a look at your music. So what's behind great album artwork? Behind it, there is sort of a conception that, well, the story behind it, like as we read it, so the arc of marriage is supposed to be a beautiful hoax. It's something that is meant to vanish. It's just a an optical illusion. As in, there is a concept which is called Fata Morgana, which is basically an optical illusion. As in, if you look at the horizon from a distance, as in from a beach, you're going to be able to see something that is an optical illusion very similar to a boat. And that's what the arc is about. The arc itself is supposed to be a, an optical illusion, something that is absolutely amazing and fantastic and beautiful, but that it actually doesn't exist. And that's okay. the beauty behind it, the enigma. Like the <laughs> sense of discovery behind it is what really makes it beautiful. As in, it's there, but it's it's actually not. It's meant to vanish, and there's a story behind it. It's just a marriage. It's beauty itself, but it's meant to vanish. It's, it's, it's just going to disappear. In being so, like your vision doesn't make it less beautiful than what it is. And that's what the message behind the music is about. Because the arc is coming out of a very rough sea. And there are also some skipper men that are actually drowning in the sea. They're just about to die there because of the power of the arc and the sea around it. That is meant to communicate to people that no matter how rough the sea is, you can find your way through things to overcome and make your creativity the main figure of your painting, the main, yeah, the protagonist of whatever your life is, is your creativity and your ideas and your emotional intelligence, however you want to call it, your instinct. That's it. Okay, okay. This guy is your third and last single before the album was released after the self-titled track Arca Morgana, All Roads Lead. So far, I don't see any video of any of these tracks I just mentioned. Will there be any one for any of these tracks on the album? For now, we think we're gonna, we're probably gonna film some playthrough videos. Many people are asking us about the guitar parts, the guitar parts of the album. So we have in mind to film Jacob and Seamus playing some guitar parts. That's totally an idea. But we are saving the music videos for our upcoming album, the next one. The next one is probably going to have some music videos. That is the plan for now. Yeah. Arca Morgana is out since last week. And to celebrate this release, the band printed a limited run of 100 Arca Morgana t-shirt. I saw them. What a beautiful t-shirt. Are you willing to print more as soon as this uh, first 100 uh, t-shirts are finished? Yeah, most certainly. As soon as these shirts finish, we're going to order some more. That is for sure. Because we love it. We love sharing the artwork. And yeah, we just love band merch in general. So if possible, as soon as the run is going to sell out, yeah, we're going to print another one. And we're going we're gonna to send you one too, Jacob. <laughs> that is for Thank sure. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> That's a great honor for me, man, to be able to wear it. More than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, on October 16, two days before the album was released, you had an exclusive album premiere organized by Where Post of Rock 12 and the band. What was that all about? There is a guy called Ronnie, one of the managers at Where Post Rock 12, and we kept in touch about the album. I sent him, I expressed my interest in releasing the album through his YouTube channel because I reckon he's got some very He's got a lot of post-rock fans and whatnot. So I thought that our album could, could shoot his channel. And he was very, very happy to do it. And he was also happy to launch a premiere. So we scheduled a day and a time together to do it. And then so we premiered the album two days before the actual release on digital platforms. And it went very well. We're very stoked with the result of the premiere. And we had a lot of people engaging with us and commenting from day one. It was a great time. Yeah, we had a great time premiering the album. Okay, great to hear that. You are bringing Arca Morgana on stage on uh, the uh, night of November at the Last Chance Rock and Roll Bar in North Melbourne. For this, the album release party, what are the fans yeah, going to get from the band? And are there more bands uh, invited for this event? Yeah, we've got three more bands on the bill with us. We're going to have Four Miles coming all the way from Geelong, which is west of Melbourne. Amazing alternative metal outfit. Then we've got Have Hold from Melbourne. 
and uh, openers, yeah, bad. They're all excellent bands. We're very looking forward to sharing the stage with them. And what can people expect from us? Simon, what can, what can people expect from us playing? I don't know. I think, um, here you go, and Jacob, I've been listening in the whole time. I've been quiet, but um, I <laughs> appreciate you taking the time to uh, chat to us. Um, it's okay. We do it with love, man. We love music, and uh, we're very, very happy, very, yes, very honored to have you guys on the show, man. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we're looking forward to yeah, this album launch. I think for Frankie and Seamus, this is kind of, I guess validation of all the work they've put in for the album and they're just really keen i guess move on to the next chapter of myriad drone which comprises of myself and jacob petrosian and the new chapter so the show is really going to be showcasing the singles and the top songs off the album and also we're hoping to throw in three new songs that we have written recently yeah for our friends and fans who will show up on the night so yeah we're looking forward to that and yeah the bands that have come on board to play that show are just fantastic so yeah we're really re- looking forward to it okay very great almost yes at the end of this uh, interview for those yes who didn't order the album as yet don't didn't get it as yet in how many format is this album available so far we only have digital release as in we are on every digital platform spotify spotify for streaming and then if you want to purchase they can get it on amazon prime these are well these are streaming as well apple music pretty much all the streaming platforms um we're planning to do a digital release ahead in time we don't know exactly when it's gonna happen but it's gonna happen we're surely gonna print a run of cds because people have been asking for cds so we're very happy to please them with a physical copy Not at the minute, guys, it's not happening just yet, but we'll make it happen. Some bands even start to (laughs) get cassettes out now. True. Thought we would get a run of vinyls, but it's not possible just yet. We'll make the vinyls happen because we really want to print the artwork. One question I want to add to this interview before we leave, guys. How is the um, post-rock evolving uh, now in Australia? How is this type of music? Do you believe that you guys are getting a lot of support, a lot of attention among the fans in the medias? Yeah, I get time to answer this one. Uh, Yeah, it's an interesting field or genre of music, I guess. Like, we've got a lot of... Like, we all listen to different types of stuff. I listen to a lot of more the Doom, Stoner, even punk rock kind of stuff. And we've got Jacob, who's an avid um, heavy metal fan. And with all this different influences, we sort of all enjoy the instrumental post-rock and even lots, lots of metal influence. So... I guess when we bring that together, we, we can kind of gel with a lot of different styles of music in Melbourne. Whether it's up and coming or not, I'm, I can't really say. There's a couple of really, really good um, post-rock bands out there, but we find ourselves playing with death metal bands, different sorts of bills. So I guess when we see international post-rock style bands come out and they're packing out big venues, it sort of shows how there is a big fan base here. And we're just looking to be a part of that and spread our music. So There's a lot of post-rock metal bands doing fantastic out there all over the world. Totally. I can just mention one. Al has just had his album out last Friday, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, man. We were listening to that in the car. It's fucking amazing. Yes, also Sour from UK, Scotland. Sour? So, yeah. Uh, do you know Sour from the UK? I've heard of them. Um, yeah, we both heard of them, yeah. 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 Not to forget the Harakiri for the Sky. Harakiri, yeah, Harakiri yeah. for the Sky, yeah. Amazing band. Here in Australia, there is a very interesting scene yep. for post-rock. It kind of blends post and prog rock at times. That's so, it. So, yeah. Mm. So, like, this, the scene here is pretty... It's pretty mixed up. There is a nice blend of post-rock, prog-rock, alternative rock and metal. That's pretty much it. It's so it's sort of a sort of an experimental scene. It's pretty uncommon, I would say, like on a worldwide yeah. level. You know, it's it's most of a Melbourne, Sydney kind of thing. But it's very cool. It's very very cool, and we love it, and we look forward to playing with like as as many bands as we like here. Yeah. yeah. Like at our album launch, we'll have have hold. They're like a fantastic like indie rock band almost. I'm with high emotions, so yeah, yeah, just goes to show the different bands that we're sort of more than happy to play with, and 
the diversity is good. So Melbourne's um, yeah diverse music scene is something we're yeah excited to be a part of. Well, I'm still doing a lot of death metal, doing a lot of black metal, but I have made a special a space within the post rock that I said it's time to start promoting these guys. Look up for them, look where they are, and pull them up front and uh, to recognize the good job that you guys are doing. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, my last question, guys. What else will the band be doing for the end of 2019? And what 2020 is about in promotion of this great album, Arca Morgana? For now, our next plan is, yeah, we're playing the album release show in November. And then we're going for our show. We're going for our first interstate Sydney show in December, middle of December. We really don't know what we're doing. We're probably all going on holiday or something like that. For the first, <laughs> no, I shouldn't <laughs> say that. We're gonna all point now is um, our main focus is writing some new music now. We really want to focus on what is gonna be our next record whilst playing shows as well. And so yeah, we are in an interesting process right now. We want to keep playing shows, but also like the new music is a very important component of the Mirror John future. So we will see. It's a bit of a question mark, but you know, for now on, you know, we're strong. And we want to keep jamming and running the music that we love making. That's pretty much it for now. And then we're pretty sure that the shows will come along. Okay, Frankie and Simon, I want to thank you very much once again for uh, making this interview possible. And I want to hand you over the microphone of Madame Messiah Radio for you to invite all your fa- friends, all your friends to support the band to buy this great uh, new album, Arca. Morgana, yes, and to buy bands, merchandises, and to attend the shows you guys have planned. The microphone is all yours, guys. Oh, thank you so much, Vampire. We're very glad to be here on uh, Bloodshed Radio with you. It was a great interview. Arca Morgana is out there on all the digital platforms, and looking forward to playing as many shows as possible and to showing like what this album is all about. And yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much once again. I hope you all the best for the band for uh, with this great uh, new album, Arca Morgana, that was released last October 18, 2019, independently. And please uh, say hello to the rest of the guys. So for me, say hello to Seamus. Say hello to Jacob. Say hello to everybody that has to do uh, with this great band. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Vampire. Thank you, Vampire. <laughs> <laughs> like I always say, metal on, guys. Bye-bye. Metal on! See ya.